Hello everyone, Heidloy here with another devlog. Last week we finished the proof of concept editor and with the holidays coming up I didn't really do much. Um, but to make this video interesting I'm going to show you the new project setup that I'm, I'm starting as not a proof of concept. And there are a couple of bevy features that I'm already using which were new in 0.12. And to just show you what's happening right now, uh, there is pretty much nothing. So I have a large, dull, uh, gray bar that if you click it, it gives, an, it gives you another one. If you click that one, it gives you a little print. And if you click it again, there's another one and another one. And all of those print to the console. Um, this is not terribly interesting, but it's using a feature that's, that's new. So I'm, I want to show that and how to use it. And it makes uh, using the Bevy UI much easier than it was before. So to start, let me show you the project setup. First of all, I have two crates now because one will be the editor and the other one is the actual game, which will have the game assets and all of the glue code. Um, for the game part, it basically just have a dependency on the editor and a little main file to kick it off. I have also changed from the proof of concept uh, the way we add the, the library to be able to give a, a name to the window from the outside so that each game can, you know, customize the window. Later on, I, I will add the icon here as well. And uh, here we already see one of the new features that I'm using. Because we are in two separate folders now, we have two separate asset folders as well, uh, which means that if I supply icons or, or images or whatever in, in the game editor, which is necessary for, for the editor UI itself, before it was difficult to reach it. Now, uh, Bevy provides the custom asset source, which basically lets you write URLs instead of paths or a URL-like thing. In my case, it's going to be like sickle, clone, slash, less, and then path to the assets. And it's pretty simple. It just points to the, to the other folder. This looks weird, but you have to imagine that you are running in the, in the other uh, crate. Um, so this is one of the new features that I'm using uh, to, to achieve a good integration uh, with, with two crates next to each other. And the other thing is uh, I, I broke out uh, all of the EGUI things um, in favor of Bevy UI. Uh, so it's, it's not here. For the moment, I, I don't plan to use it, uh, mainly because the game needs a UI too. And uh, EGUI, it's, it has its own ecosystem and its own framework and everything. And I just didn't feel like it's, it's a good thing to put the two together. Then uh, I created um, a new UI plugin, which I call the scaffold. Um, the scaffold has the parts that's necessary to, to hold together the, the UI components. Um, and then uh, I have a main menu, uh, which is basically the great thing you have seen there. And I created something that I called the UI interactions. If you looked into uh, the Bevy UI, um, the, the current version, um, you will notice that it's a bit verbose uh, and it's a bit difficult to to create um, a UI, N not the UI layout itself, but how you interact with the UI, um, because you have to, to write systems um, in a generic way, generic enough to, to handle all of your buttons, for instance, and then figure out which button is actually being clicked. So you would probably need marker components to say, hey, this is my main menu button, this is my um, file editor, and this is my map editor. But that's a bit cumbersome. So if you look at the example in Bevy, this one, uh, this is what I'm talking about. So it says, it says button system. And uh, this basically go through every button and then just changes it. In this case, they don't care. They only have one button. But if you have multiple buttons, um, this will grow. And of course, you can break it out to, to separate functions and separate systems to handle specifically uh, one or two or other buttons. But it's not intuitive. And it's usually not what, um, let's say, people expect. Uh, so th this is the area where, where an ECS is not 
fit uh, for the purpose. Uh, UI is basically a, a, a bunch of buttons. All of them are doing something different, uh, be that hover or or interaction or click or callbacks, whatever. They are unique usually. Um, so it's difficult to organize them uh, in an ECS manner. However, um, uh, Bevy 012 introduced uh, one-shot systems, which means that you can, uh, as you can see here, just run a system, which means that you register it before, um, you have to register it in the world, and then you can just call it with a handle um, whenever you want, which is great. This allows me to uh, do something like this. Um, so it, this is the part where I'm creating that uh, bar. Uh, this is basically just a box for the whole uh, screen and uh, there is the bra bar. And then for the thing that I created, I spawned, I can add uh, an on-press handle uh, from something. And I made it so that this is something that accepts um, systems. So it's a, it's a regular system. It can be anything. It can be a closure as well. Uh, like so. And uh, this is neat. Uh, and I can imagine adding more of this. Um, the only thing is that it's a bit verbose. So what I did on top of, of, uh, of, of this, um, by the way, this is how you register your system. So you have to accept the you take the, your callback, uh, you register the system, and then um, you insert a component that holds uh, a system ID. Um, be careful if you remove one, you also have to, or well, you should remove your system as well uh, from the world. There, there is a matching um, function to remove a system. You, you should do that if you, if you are no longer needing that button, uh, for instance. Mm, so what I did, I basically uh, copied all of this, all of these, and uh, put them in a in a in a macro. You can see that this is almost verbatim the same. Uh, there is the name of the original identifier, and I create a, a handler um, identifier which is the same as what you have seen here. And now I can. I can do this and uh, it should still work. You see, I don't have the code anymore, but I can still spawn more boxes and the boxes still uh, write out click uh, on the on the console. And this is this is it. This is it. Uh, wh why is it good to, to have it as a as a as a macro? Because I can then do um, hovered. And then let's say I can just uh, brute force this. So let's say I'm going to handle the hovered interaction. And it should be hovered. And of course, we, we, can, we can also run it on the update. And now I can come back here and let's see, I want my box to print whenever it's hovered. Oops, uh, I should probably import it as well. Because it's uh, handler. I have an unused import there. Anyway, if I click, uh, it appears. But if I hover, I have a click. Well, it should be saying hover now, I guess. And I should clean this up. You get the idea. Um, the only thing is uh, that's currently not possible. Uh, not in this setup anyway, is telling which entity is currently being hovered or clicked, you know, uh, because the command doesn't know. So it's it's a system that 
it's a generic system. You can you can query anything you want, as you have seen here. Um, I'm querying, I'm getting the command, and then have a root node query uh, to inject uh, the new uh, thing. But this one, this one doesn't need anything. So the problem remains. Uh, you don't know uh, the current uh, currently hovered or clicked entity, which works or not uh, depends. Um, you, we could potentially uh, check uh, for for the interaction thing, or you know, add the component to the entity before we run the system to mark it, uh, and then add another command that removes it. I have to test. I don't know. Hey, a quick interjection from uh, the future. It is actually possible to to detect or mark uh, the 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 entity that's currently being handled, and uh, I did a little trick um, uh, to do that. So basically, uh, the the event handle handler uh, component uh, is now a normal struct uh, with a system ID and uh, and the public active flag which is something I set with a command immediately before uh, I run the system and then reset immediately after the system. And uh, with a little uh, query magic, uh, you can actually tell which one is the active one. This is a bit too much. Um, I can I could imagine having just um, a marker component, a dedicated component in instead of um, having a component with changing um, parameters but it belongs to that component and I don't want uh, the entity to change archetypes because uh, of adding and removing components just for running the um, the little uh, system we have um, but anyway this actually lets me uh, do a dedicated and targeted uh, or hover for instance uh, and we no longer need to, you know, print the uh, thing to the console. Anyway, uh, that's me from the, from the future. The macro also needs to be updated, of course, because uh, um, because when we create uh, the component that stores the system ID and, and the active flag, now we need to add the flag as well. Uh, but that's it. Uh, don't forget to. Uh, reload your prots macros if you if you change and you, you have a, a a warning there uh, it happens sometimes anyway uh, back to the video but this is a secondary thing for the moment the point is that i can uh, just mash out um, commands that uh, that i can uh, that would attach um, a system a one shot system uh, to an entity um, and that's great, and I can reuse it for for anything. However, um, for this particular thing, the the press, the hover, there is only a, a third one, which is none. So Bevy currently doesn't report when something is being pressed. You know, well, that's that's about it. I mean, that's that's the one thing that I'm I'm currently missing. Let's say something that's currently being pressed. Why is it necessary? If I want an animation to appear. When I'm pressing the button, you know, a little color change, uh, a little um, smoosh or s squish or, you know, uh, I can do that because I don't know that the thing is being pressed. Uh, I, I only know that after it has been pressed. Um, so that's another thing that I'm probably going to uh, create as, a, as, a, as an interaction um, as part of this interaction plugin. And another thing that I'm considering creating is is an automatic binding to a value um, let's say a, a resource or a, or a component on it uh, just just to change the text you know on, on, on certain certain things anyway until then have fun ciao ciao